All right, we are at learning objective two. Woohoo! How exciting. Uh, now, here we're going to be learning about the flow of costs um, in a process cost system. And then those wonderful journal entries. Yes, journals are important. So, here we go with an introduction um, of the process cost flow using this company called Tyler Company. And Tyler Company, they manufacture roller blade and skateboard wheels, okay? So roller blade wheels and skateboard wheels. And they sell those to manufacturers of skateboards and roller blades, and they sell those to retail outlets as well. Now manufacturing these types of wheels uh, has two specific processes involved in creating them. The first is there's gonna be some machining to be done. Second is they have to do uh, some assembly. After that, it's ready to be sold to the customer, right? It's finished goods and it can be sold to other manufacturers and retailers, right? So these, these are their main customers here, okay? All right, so basically they, they're looking at these processes going through two departments. The machining department is the one that shapes, hones, and drills those raw materials that will become rollerblade and skateboard wheels. And then the assembly department, as the second department, they do the assembling and packaging of those parts. And thus, they have finished goods once they're done. Okay, so look at the process. This is a very important illustration here. Uh, it is on page 93, at the top of page 93 um, in your book, okay? And it shows here, again, just like the other cost system, everything starts with raw materials, factory labor, and manufacturing over it. So that, the starting point is exactly the same as what we learned in chapter two. The difference is in the assignment of those costs. A portion of these costs are gonna be assigned to the machining department, right? Because the machining department has to shape and hone and drill those raw materials uh, so they start looking like wheels, <laughs> okay? Um, but some of these costs also have to be assigned to the assembly department because they have, they have people working there and they have overhead and they got work to do. And remember, the assembly department does a different function or a different process. They assemble and package those wheels for sale to the, to the customers. So there's, there's two departments or two processes in which we are assigning raw materials, factory labor, and manufacturing overhead to. One of the differences is, however, once the um, machining department is done with its work, all of those costs will be transferred to the assembly department because the assembly department is that last step in the process before the finished good is made. Okay, so this really is where the difference is. The manufacturing costs are allocated to the departments. Each department has a role in creating the product. Uh, the machining department's role starts that particular process. So eventually those costs will be sent to the next department that finishes the process. So one department starts it, the other department finishes it. And when we say finishes, is once, it, once the assembly department is done with its work, it's a finished good. So then all of the costs of the assembly department need to be allocated to the finished goods inventory. And then once that's done and sold to these manufacturers and retailers of uh, skateboard and rollerblade wheels, um, it'll be put into cost of goods sold. Um, and that's the process. That's the process. It's really not that bad. This is where uh, this is where it differs, is that first few blocks here, okay? How are we doing? Let me just see if we have any 
Any thumbs up? Does that, did that process make sense to you that we just went over? You just see the, that little tiny difference that it, we're allocating to, okay. All right, good. Okay, so uh, again, the, uh, once we accumulate uh, materials and labor and overhead, it's the exact same that we saw very early on in, in chapter two, right? When we purchase raw materials, we debit raw materials. Uh, when we uh, need labor to be incurred, we debit factory labor. And when we calculated our uh, overhead cost, uh, we debited manufacturing overhead, okay? So the first part of the process is always the same. The second part of the process is a little bit different. The assignment of those um, accounts, the raw materials, factory labor, and overhead uh, to the process. Okay, work in process uh, accounts in a process cost system is where you saw those differences. Because in our case, with this company, Tyler Company, it's going to be allocated by the department or to the department. Sorry. Okay. So uh, material costs uh, usually are going to be started in in the first department, uh, although it's not like mater materials are not needed in, in the next department as well. They're still packaging all these things, so you need materials. So um, there's fewer materials, uh, requisitions, slips in this process at a process cost system than there is job order. If you know job order, it started with that materials requisition slip. Okay. Um, but that's per job. Remember, process costs, they're doing a whole mess of things all at once. So there'll be fewer slips. Yeah. Their process is bigger. Uh, materials are going to be used for the actual process and not the job. Right? And those requisitions, when they do receive a material requisition request, it's going to be for a large quantity of those materials because the jobs are bigger. So there's going to be a journal entry to uh, that's going to look like the one down here. They're taking uh, materials out of the raw materials inventory account, which is why it's credited here, and moving that to the departments that need those materials. So the machining department's going to need a certain amount of those materials. The assembly department's going to need a certain amount of those materials. This is going to be allocated that way. Okay. So this is something you need to know. Factory labor costs are going to be done the same way, right? Time tickets are going to be used regardless. Um, that's usually how we keep track of, of uh, time that labor is, is uh, being used. Um, and the journal entry is going to look very similar, except, of course, remember, you are going to credit the factory labor account here to lower it. And again, it's going to be allocated to how much labor is needed for machining and how much labor is going to be needed for assembly. So it's just going to be broken up. So the work and process accounts um, are going to show the department that, that those costs were allocated to. And overhead, <clears throat> okay, uh, for the most part, um, they, they allocate overhead uh, overwhelmingly on a particular activity, and the particular activity is machine time used, okay. Now, this uh, particular activity is called something called a primary driver. Now, you'll see this word, or this term, used uh, a lot in, manu in uh, managerial accounting going forward. So it might be important to understand that this basically is the activity that drives the costs, right? The primary driver is the, it's the biggest activity that drives the costs. And for this type of, you know, you're processing uh, or blending things to spit out, you know, Hershey bars. Uh, I love chocolate, so yeah pick on a Hershey bar, um, it's going to be that machine time use that's going to be your primary driver. So the journal entry to allocate this, this is what you need to know here, right? Your manufacturing overhead account will be credited and that will be allocated, um, again, 
based on machine time used for machining and assembly departments. Okay, um, this is a, a, a good story uh, that I think you should read. It's the bottom of page 94 um, in your book, and it's about Caterpillar. These are not the type that uh, put, it, put themselves in a cocoon and, and come out to be some type of butterfly or moth. Uh, this is a, a large manufacturer of earth moving equipment. Uh, Caterpillar is, is quite big. They, um, here's a, 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 a picture down here of, a, uh, of a, one of the major earth moving machines that Caterpillar builds. Uh, they do a whole bunch of large machinery. Okay. So uh, Caterpillar here um, uh, feeds work into the cost center where robotic machines process it and transfer it to a finished goods um, job uh, without, without human intervention. One person tends all the machines and spends more time maintaining the machines than operating them. Okay. So in this type of a case, um, allocating your overhead based on labor hours is not good. It's not a good idea because labor is a very, very small portion of this manufacturing product uh, process. Okay. So it's best here, um, to uh, to use machine hours, because much of what again these robotic machines are doing all of the work uh, for the most part compared to you know the the humans or the labor that's involved direct labor that's involved labor still involved maintaining machines um, but you wouldn't want to allocate your overhead based on that factor. It's not the primary driver. So when you choose a primary cost driver, it should be the major aspect of the manufacturing process. So in the case of Caterpillar, the major aspect are these machine hours, not labor. So that would be a primary cost driver. Okay. Uh, the last thing that this uh, section talks about is assigning the costs to, uh, in this case, to the next department. And then, of course, after the other department is done, to finished goods. And then after finished goods are sold, to cost of goods sold. If you want to look around, uh, this is on page 95 uh, in your book. So if you're on uh, page 95, you'll see this. Okay, so uh, these are all about assigning costs through the process that you, uh, that you just learned about. So every month, okay, um, we're, gonna be we're gonna be transferring various work to the next department. So in the case where our company, Tyler Company, Everything starts in machining and gets raw materials mostly start in machining and then they get transferred to assembly. Assembly is the very last place, right? As you see here, to transfer those goods, you transfer them out of the machining department, which is what the credit does, and into the assembly department, which is what the debit does for work in process here. Okay, so this is what you have. You have to know this as well. Well, what happens when assembly is all done with them? Well, then they're going to be transferred to finished goods. And so what we do here is you have a debit to the finished, finished goods inventory will increase. And we need to take it out of assembly. So we'll take it out of work and process assembly with a credit. That'll decrease that. Once they're in finished goods, the next step is to sell them to the customer. And so what that looks like is once they're sold to customers, we debit the cost of goods sold account. And we will credit our finished goods inventory because we sold the inventory. 
Okay, so this process of transfers you need to know as well. But I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. All right, so in making a journal entry to assign raw material costs, um, well, the debit is going to be um, to different departments. So there's going to be two or more different work and process accounts based on each department that you're putting the costs of raw materials into. And you saw that very early in this objective. All right, let's review the do it exercise. And we've done it. Woo! I don't want to manufacture any laughs uh, out there, but I'm hoping that you're smiling at least. Okay, so here we have a Blue Diamond Company. It sounds pretty exotic, actually. They manufacture Zebo. I have no idea what that is. Through two processes. Blending is the first process. Bottling is the second process. Okay, so this is a process cost system, right? Because they have two different departments that are used to create the finished goods. Looks like blending is first, bottling is second. All right, so in June, we had raw materials used for blending of 18,000 and bottling for 4,000. So you can see what's coming. We need to do a journal entry for that. Factory labor costs for blending were 12,000 and for bottling were 5,000. So you kind of see that we have to do an entry for that. Manufacturing overhead costs for blending 6,000, bottling 2,500. So we already have three entries we have to make, raw materials, factory labor, manufacturing overhead, and we're gonna be allocating those to different accounts. Then the company transfers the units that have been completed, right? $19,000 of those units from the blending department to the bottling department. So we have to have an entry to show that we've transferred from departments. Once the bottling department is done, completing its job of $11,000, it sends all of that to you for finished goods. So we need to go ahead and do a finished goods uh, entry as well. And the question is to journalize the costs. Right? Again, there's two processes involved um, and we're gonna show transfer of all of this. So materials used, right? Uh, that was the first thing. We know that uh, work and process for blending needed $18,000 of materials. Bottling needed 4,000 of materials, so we needed 22,000 of materials inventory allocated. So the credit to raw materials inventory shows less raw materials inventory, rather more of that has been allocated to blending, and this portion was allocated to bottling. For factory labor, uh, again, we are going to allocate $17,000 of labor costs. 12,000 of, of those labor costs are for blending, 5,000 are, are for bottling, okay? For overhead, we have $8,500 of manufacturing overhead that we allocated. We allocated 6,000 of that to the blending department for work in process, 2,500 to the bottling department for work in process. Now we have to transfer the units uh, from blending to bottling. Okay. And so to record that, we have $19,000 of uh, a finished a product coming out of the blending department going into the bottling department, both part of work and process. And then uh, the bottling department is done with a certain amount of that and they transferred it to finished goods. Uh, it was $11,000, as you might recall. So we take that out of the bottling work and process and put it and move it into finished goods inventory for the debit. 
that should be the that should be it. Yes. Okay. We'll do that next time. I'm gonna stop the share, bring it back to our big screen.